Out of all the animated films that were released in 2018, there was only one that was the most successful in terms of the box office, and that's the sequel to the Pixar film from 2004, The Incredibles. When it came out in 2004, it was a big success critically and financially, as people consider it one of the best films of that year. So much so, it actually won two Oscars for Best Animated Feature and Best Sound Editing, which is still, as of 2019, the first and only animated film to win a sound award at the Oscars, and earned two additional nominations for Best Sound Mixing and Best Original Screenplay. And how we all love this film is thanks to Brad Bird and the crew at Pixar for making him a beloved director. Sure, we all know him who did The Iron Giant, which was a bomb when it came out, but it's now been considered a masterpiece in the media of animated features, and of course he also directed his second film at Pixar, Ratatouille, and even directed two live-action films, with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol and Tomorrowland that no one talks about. Now, for my thoughts on the original, when I was a kid, it was one of my least favorite Pixar films. But then revisiting it years later, I do have an appreciation to it now that I'm older. From a great original concept about a family of superheroes, great use of animation, especially the action, and characters that are so memorable, even Syndrome is considered to be one of the best Pixar villains next to Lotso from Toy Story 3. But now, after 14 years, we finally got the most anticipated sequel in years which was a big hit for everyone in the summer, but a big backlash in the awards season because a lot of crazy people were hating it because it made a billion dollars for Bob Iker's pocket, even though he did already won for 2019, and the Academy might have some sort of a Disney bias ever since Big Hero 6 won over How to Train Your Dragon 2 when the Lego movie got snubbed. A large majority of those people who are complaining are those who are massive fans to the winning film, which will be on Friday. And let's see if those fans can prove me that it's just a cash grab instead of, of a big wait. Or do I say that this is good with the most anticipated Pixar sequel, Incredibles 2? Brad's sequel takes place right at the end of the first film when the family is ready to face the Underminer. Unfortunately, not also he escaped, but the family got arrested since superheroes are still illegal. Which unfortunately, this leaves a bad mark for the Pars, since not only they have to go back hiding their superpowers, but Rick Dicker's department shut down, Bob doesn't have a job, and they lost their original home all thanks to Syndrome. Then, Lucius told Helen and Bob that they got a job offering from Winston Dever to do undercover superhero work, and his plan is to make sure that superheroes are trusted to the public again. So he decides to choose Elastigirl to start the undercover superhero work. Which means that Bob would have to look after the kids, especially how Violet is upset that her love interest Tony doesn't know who she is, all thanks to Rick for making him lose a part of his memory of seeing Violet in her suit, has to deal with Dash's math, and finding out that Jack-Jack actually has superpowers. However, a masked villain called Screenslaver is hypnotizing people through monitor images, which could cause a major disaster. But this villain is to make sure that superheroes are illegal forever by mind-controlling them with goggles. So it's up to Helen, with the support of her family, to stop the Screenslaver to prove that superheroes should be legal again. Now, I was concerned about going into this mainly because of the disappointment I had with Ralph Breaks the Internet and going completely insane on Mirai on how it turned out to be. Well, luckily, thank you Pixar for making a good film and a worthy sequel here. I mean, how can you not love that we are seeing these characters again in new development they have never gone before? Especially with Bob doing what his wife does and Violet going into a tantrum after what he and Rick did. And Jack-Jack is the show-stealer of this film. He wasn't big in the first film, no pun intended, but seeing a variety of his powers he has is awesome, especially when he's fighting with a raccoon. In terms of the animation, if you look back in the original, it doesn't look that good compared to today's animated films. But the advance of technology somehow managed to make the originals not dated. Also, the texture and the lighting style works well for its use of color. 
with the exception of the flashing black and white for the villain's hypnosis, because for those who have epilepsy, you might want to be careful. As for the big action here, man, it's a lot of fun here, especially the big one for the climax. However, I still prefer the Omnidroid battle from the original. In terms of the characters, the Pars are the real stars of the film, especially Helen from being an overprotective mother in the original to a woman who can prove that superheroes are good. For Bob, he now understands how to be a perfect father, especially to his kids. But as for Lucius at End of Mode, while Lucius almost has the same amount of screen time like he did in the original, but for Edna, same amount of time she has, but it feels like more of a can. As for the new ones, they're honestly quite forgettable. From Winston to his sister Evelyn, and the other hidden superheroes, even the one who is a big fan of hers, are not that important to the film's structure. But for the screen slaver, too bad to say this that this is another plot twist villain we have here. And it just seems that we are tired of these plot twist villains for both Disney Animation and Pixar. But luckily for Toy Story 4 we have a straightforward villain, says the person who has not seen it yet. Now the biggest issue that this film has, other than the new characters, is that the story is the same but the gender reversal. Which works, but could be a little lazy here. But the dialogue makes it so generic as it is. So yeah, despite of its award show backlash, I did enjoy this film. Yeah, it's not as good as the original, but giving Elastigirl the spotlight and great action proves that this is worth the wait. Like Ralph Breaks the Internet, I don't need to do recommendations, because everyone's seen it. So as Pixar has another billion dollars to give to Mr. Iger, we look into a stop-motion film from a live-action director that was overlooked by some moviegoers.